How are people doing mobile te uh, testing? And um, you know, is there anything that you know we can all learn from one another? And uh, you know, possibly, is there is there a way that we can sort of maybe uh, converge uh, the testing space a little bit to make it uh, a little bit easier to choose uh, um, a mobile testing tool? Um, so I'm I'm super psyched uh, that it's finally happening, uh, and uh, really glad to be here. Um, just out of my, for my own uh, curiosity, uh, how many people here would sort of describe themselves as a, as a tester? Just show of hands. Wow, yeah, raise them high, super high. Uh, wow, okay, so I would say that's about maybe half, half of the folks here. Uh, how many folks would des uh, describe themselves as a developer? Okay, maybe about a third or so. Um, and how many people just wanted to be here because they wanted the day off work? <laughs> Me. Okay. So about 15% uh, of the people here are honest. <laughs> um, so uh, with, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce um, a man that you may know as the creator of uh, Selenium. Uh, you may also know him more recently as the creator of a robot that can play Angry Birds. Um, I know him as a great guy uh, who's a lot of fun to hang out with, and please give it up for Jason Huggins. So when I practiced this, uh, even though I had a half hour slot, I finished in 12 minutes, but now I only have 10, so hey, this actually is going to work okay. okay. Uh, if anyone knows me, uh, I usually just completely wing it all the time. Uh, I gave the uh, opening keynote, I think, at the Selenium conference two years ago. And I just had five cards and just w winged the whole thing. This time I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to, I prepared, uh, I rehearsed. Uh, so apologies if this comes across uh, uh, as you know a really nervous high school senior giving their um, valedictorian speech because it's going to sound like it's red because it is red. Uh, and I don't have those cool teleprompters to make it look like I'm just giving a nice presidential acceptance speech. So I'm going to be looking down, try to look up, but here we go. So on with the, uh, the actually reading prepared remarks with nine minutes and 26 seconds left to go. So welcome to the conference. Welcome to the summit. Um, let me just dive in. I love automated testing. I believe test automation is a critical piece of the puzzle for pushing code from GitHub to Heroku as fast as possible. And while building confidence that everything that was working yesterday still works today. And this is why I started Sauce Labs back in 2008 and why we invested in building our Selenium as a service cloud. We started with Selenium because it's the market leading testing tool for desktop web testing. For mobile, however, it's a brand new game. It's not enough to just test web apps in mobile browsers. Looking at the success of the app marketplaces, as in the Apple App Store or Google Play, it's obvious that native and hybrid app development is popular with developers too. And there's no consensus on the right tool for testing anything on mobile, native, hybrid, or web. While the mobile test automation tool market matures, many mobile developers have given up on using automated tests and gone back to manual testing. Of course, no one in this room, right? Developers will come back to test automation when consensus is reached. But consensus, build, consensus building doesn't just happen automatically. This is why we hosted the, the mobile, this is why we're hosting the mobile testing summit, to get the world's leading open source test automation tool creators in one room and see what happens. I really don't know what's gonna happen today, but I'd just love to hear the conversations as they go on today. So at the summit, we're going to share what's worked, what hasn't, and chart a course forward. And as we chart that course, I think it's useful actually to reflect on the secrets of Selenium success and see uh, if they apply to mobile. So I've got my uh, kind of Dave Letterman style top 10 list. I'm gonna start with number 10. Number 10, be good at one thing and pick the right thing. Uh, born in the age of Ajax and Web 2.0, Selenium was pretty good at testing JavaScript heavy web applications. But it really excelled at driving Firefox and either OS 10 and Linux with uh, Java client libraries. It's ironic because this started out actually as a, a Python project, so, but Java ended up being kind of the, the killer app. This Firefox, Linux, Java thing was the key thing. Firefox was developers' favorite browser, MacBooks was their favorite development machine, and Java probably wasn't their favorite programming language, but it's what most large-scale web applications were written in. 
So I'm curious, it's kind of a question for, for us to discuss today, what's that killer combo for mobile testing? Is it Python, is it JavaScript, is it iOS, is it Android, is Windows uh, going to um, take over the world, right? Ironic to say that all these years later now, right? What about Microsoft? Number nine, make stone soup. Start as in, start small, sell the dream, and ask for help. The Selenium, Selenium project's mission is to automate all browsers and all operating systems with any programming language. However, with such a big, hairy, audacious goal is not something that one person can do by, by themselves. Like the old folk story where a village turned a pot and a simple stone into a delicious soup, Selenium needed lots of help from lots of people to get the job done. At the beginning, many browser, OS, and language combinations were buggy and, uh, or incomplete. You know, it really stunk on Safari on, on Mac. And if you use XPath element locators in Internet Explorer, Selenium was worse than an angry skunk. I sorry. But things got better over time as more people got involved. At first, you don't need a detailed roadmap, but you do need to tell people where, what mountain you're climbing. If you start small yet dream big enough, you just might be able to convince strangers to help you on your journey. Number eight, no assembly required. Don't require, and this is actually a big one, I think. Don't require developers to modify their apps in any way just to start using your test library. Developers should be able to test their app as is. Originally, Selenium violated this rule. Because of the same origin policy, it's a long story I'm not gonna get into, but Selenium's JavaScript and HTML had to be served alongside the rest of the uh, application's public assets. So effectively, you had, you had to modify your app to use Selenium, because you had to put Selenium in it. This was a very frequent complaint and impediment to adoption. Uh, and once Selenium remote control arrived, we were able to remove that app modification requirement, and I think adoption uh, soared from there. There are several reasons that this is important, some technical and some cultural. I'm not gonna go into um, all the details here, but um, some developers just think it's yucky to have to modify their app just for testing purposes. And testers, um, sometimes, you know, it, it's kind of sad and wrong, but some, there is the reality in some organizations where you, you don't really have either technically or cultural reasons to modify the source code of the app. So having a an app that you can just take as is and test it is a huge deal. Number seven. Be newbie friendly. Newbies want their hands held. Don't leave them hanging. Focus on the first 15 minutes experience. Although it's controversial in the testing world, you should consider having a record playback tool for helping new users write their first tests. Now, if you were uh, you know, a real uh, dyed-in-the-wool testing fan, you'd be throwing tomatoes at me for right now for saying that. But like a good mentor, you should encourage those newbies to not abuse that tool. Number six. Be developer friendly. Pay attention to how developers prefer to work. Let developers use their favorite text editors or IDEs. They also want to write their tests in the same language as their app source code and check those tests in the same code repository. And don't invent a new programming language. Many of the commercial testing tools that Selenium supplanted broke all those rules and explains why developers refuse to use them. Number five, and I've got three more minutes. I'll go a little bit faster. Scaling happens. Uh, Paul Hammett, one of the early contributors to the project, I actually, he came in so early, I give him the credit of co-creator of Selenium, uh, at least when he's uh, with an earshot, right? Uh, Paul Hammett gets the credit here for scaling. It took me a long time to realize that he was right all along. A, first, a few months into the project, uh, Paul wrote uh, what became Selenium Remote Control. He used a technique called Comet, or long polling, although at the time it didn't have a name. And it basically enabled it so you could drive Selenium uh, from any programming language. But the, the key thing that he decided, that he really was adamant about is that we use HTTP. And the nice thing about that is uh, we got a nice little couple of benefits for using that as the transport protocol. We did kind of abuse HTTP, and it's a stateless protocol, but you're using it for very stateful, very chatty stuff. Um, but it, it lets you do, it lets you scale up gracefully. Um, projects like the Selenium Farm that I worked on at Google, uh, the Selenium Grid project, and even Sauce Labs, you know, using HTTP allows us to exist because testing it locally or testing on the network, it, it just works. The other benefit of HTTP is because through the magic of HTTP proxying, you can distribute those tests across much, much of the machi many machines, and all that complexity gets to sit on that load balancer and not in your tests. So you might think that worrying about scaling is a premature optimization, but it's not much premature when it comes to testing. So sometimes you are going to need it. 
Number four, good ideas come from everywhere. Be welcoming of ideas from other projects and occasionally merge and join forces. When Simon Stewart and I uh, spoke at the, uh, the Google Test Automation Conference in 2007, we were both quite proud of our own projects and happy doing our own thing. But we quickly realized that many, we shared many common goals and attitudes regarding the future of test automation. At the conference, we hatched a plan to merge our projects, and Simon's WebDriver project became Selenium 2. Uh, so when someone comes along and fixes all your problems, and they inconveniently didn't solve them uh, in your code base, uh, don't get mad. Instead, get them drunk and trick them into taking over your project. <laughs> Number three, be social. It's not enough to simply create. You also have to promote your work. Speak at a meetup, speak at conferences, write blog posts, create screencasts, but you don't have to do it alone. Um, I've had the luck and pleasure of working in many environments where everyone was encouraged to publicly share their work as much as possible. I did my part in getting the word out about Selenium uh, in the beginning, but friends and colleagues did a bulk of the work for me. I couldn't be in every city and every conference talking about Selenium, but my friends could. So collect lots of friends. If you solve an important problem for them, they'll be more than happy to tell the world about it on your behalf. Number two, the penultimate. That's my favorite word. Be free. Open source for the win. Duh, right? Everyone has their own story for why they believe in, in the power of open source. I became a big believer in open source years ago as a system administrator of a large proprietary HR system. Halfway through that implementation, we unfortunately realized that critical func functionality just flat out didn't work. It was complete vaporware. Shocking. Right? Uh, this is the bad old ERP days. Well, without access to the source code and being too small to actually get the attention of the vendor, uh, we were kind of on our own. We had no ability to fix the issue. So we ended up writing, I'm out of time. Do I get some uh, you know, soccer extra minutes here, some penalty time? All right. Yeah, I'm only on two. I, I skipped a lot, though. Hey. Uh, where was I? So we ended up writing our own replacement system. And this was actually the time and expense system that the project, the Selenium project, came from. Uh, having access to the source code is especially important in testing. Uh, as, as software development kits and standards evolve, testing tools are on a treadmill racing to keep up. And it doesn't scale to expect just one project or one team to know how to automate every crazy cool new HTML5 or iOS feature at all times. With open source, when your users run into a feature that your testing tool can't handle, they're not stuck. They have the power to, to fix things and move on, and hopefully give you patches. The last one. Stealing a page out of Steve Jobs here, but he was right. Be foolish. Do the things that other th others think are crazy, within, re within reason, of course. If you believe passionately in a particular idea, do it anyway, despite what people say. In 2003, using JavaScript was considered a very unprofessional thing. It was buggy and inconsistent in every browser, but using JavaScript let us create some really cool and fast features that we couldn't do any other way. Then six months later, Gmail and Google Maps came along, that came along and uh, using JavaScript was no longer crazy. Foolish today, genius tomorrow. Paradoxically, if you, want to keep, if you want people to keep thinking well of you, you have to keep doing things that they think are quite foolish. So stay foolish. So that's it. So I will leave you, uh, I didn't have an ending because I thought I was going to go later today, but um, I'll, I'll improv just for a second. So the, those 10 things, I'll read it off really quickly. This is your grading sheet, effectively, for evaluating all the talks that you will see today. Let's, uh, let's, let's do that. Be good at one thing. Make stone soup. If you don't know that, read that up. Look that up. No assembly required. Be newbie friendly. Be developer friendly. Worry about scaling. Good ideas come from everywhere. Be social. Be free and be foolish. I think that's the grading score for all the projects that are going to be on, on display today. Uh, I've got my own personal favorites, but I'm very excited about this meeting, uh, about this summit today, because this is a meeting of uh, peers, a meeting of colleagues, and I really want to see uh, great ideas and great conversations flourish. So thank you for attending, and enjoy the rest of the day.